Hi, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About This. Uh, I'm excited right now because we're talking about something a little bit more exciting and upbeat. Uh, we're going to be talking about hip hop. Uh, today, I have a guest who's been in the business in over 30 years. She's an OG in this game. Uh, <laughs> she is the creator of the hip hop uh, awards and she's the CEO of the consortium of of hip hop and uh, ladies and gentlemen welcome um, Tandy Weems how you doing Tandy I am fine thank you so much thank you for inviting me I can't say how much I appreciate it thank I'm you. glad to have you on you're so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> thank you thanks for thank coming you. on uh, um, takes one to know one right yeah that's right <laughs> that's right we get to talk a little bit about hip-hop today um yeah. she's been doing this for a long time she's been in the business um we're going to talk about the 2024 hip-hop awards uh is this the, the is this something that you have your putting together right now for the Absolutely. year 2024. I, I'm excited. I can almost jump out my skin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited I am about this, this event. Um, would you believe it? I actually wrote this show when I was working for Biggie Smalls. Oh, really? I wrote this show. Um, uh, some Somebody sent something across my desk. Uh -huh. And it was a microphone. I wish I could thank that person out there in this big world, but right. it was a microphone with the, instead of the top of the mic, it was a globe, a world globe. Okay. I went to bed that night and I dreamed the World Hip Hop Awards. Wow. And I got up and I just wrote it down. Uh huh. So I copy wrote it and just put it away. Right, right. 2017, I remembered it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I pulled it out, did all the work again, you know, got it all back legal and, 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 and patented and everything. And then we just put it up. The World Hip Hop Awards is the first global hip-hop award show As a matter of fact it's the first global music award show but wow. it's the first global hip-hop award show it's the first hip-hop award show to actually celebrate and honor hip-hop culture not just the music right okay and it's the first hip-hop award show that we will actually see culture and hip-hop music from all over the world on one stage different interpretations different languages different styles it right. is absolutely going to be off the chain. Oh, it is wow. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. It sounds like it's going to be off the chain. Oh, my <laughs> God. Could you, give me, could you give me a little bit of what's, who's going to be uh, performing at this yeah. This year, we, well, we're targeting because we don't have anyone signed up now. We're having, we're just now signing up, putting everything together. But our targeted host uh, is Dave Chappelle and uh, Queen Latifah. No okay. one could be better than that. Oh you know no! Saying? I mean, yeah. Dave Chappelle is well respected for his love for real hip hop, and right. Queen Latifah is the queen. Right, <laughs> right, an icon. And right. we're looking at artists like uh, Wu Tang, of course, uh, Kendrick Lamar um uh Jasmine Bay you know and there's a host of uh international independent artists like Dax okay um, uh, and, I mean there's so many this young kid named Praz who's d making splashes all over the internet uh with his uh his work and his uh TikTok uh, videos and dances so what we're looking to do is to bring artists signed or unsigned together and 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 what makes us about this show is for us this is right. for hip hop heads and it's the first black owned first independent and right. produced by a black woman mm. <laughs> you know what I'm can't get no better than can't that get no better than that mm -mm. <laughs> We're going yeah. to bring everyone together. You don't have to have a record deal. It's about the music. It's about the message mm -hmm. and about bringing hip hop back to the protocols okay. that were established by those that created it and right. the communities that, you know, that helped shape it. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? We kind of right. take it. I look at hip hop now as a child that has been taken away from its mother. Right. Which is the base, which is the community, which is the protocols, as mm -hmm. KRS One would say, which I we plan to give him an award also. <laughs> right. Oh, he's it's, it's, he's Absolutely. well deserved. Yeah. Absolutely. We really yeah. want him to be 100% involved in what we're trying to do. And it is, it's actually been taken away from his base, it's been taken away from the protocols. So, when just like a child taken away from his mother, it can be used, it can be abused, it can be manipulated. So, I, that's what I see hip hop is. So, right. we're looking to bring it back home to the mama. 
<laughs> right, right. <laughs> and it's good. To the base. That's right. And it's good that you're giving independent artists, up and coming artists, an opportunity to be exposed, you know, um, around the world, because I'm Absolutely. sure the world is going to be watching this, you know, Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, and that's unusual because usually uh, independent artists, um, you know, don't get those opportunities. So that's an amazing, that's really amazing. Absolutely. Because I looked at some of the independent artists over the years of working, especially working this event. Mm -hmm. And I found that that is where you will find a lot of the real amazing hip hop and all, like I said, and unique interpretations, different languages. You don't even have to speak the language, that's but you true. can feel what they're talking about. You can feel right. the beat. You can understand what they're saying. The right. imagery gives you that understanding. You know what I'm saying? So right. it'd be crazy to limit that, to leave that out because right. that is what we see happening commercially. So right. we, we want to bring that in because we think that by having those artists in, it'll inspire other artists to be a part of the culture. Right. right. So it seems to be some kind of an unwritten protocol that you can only be from one neighborhood you can only sing about one certain thing and it can right. be just, you know, it's just so marginalized right uh, I think that by bringing um hip-hop the way it was all are invited long as you respect the culture and respect what's going down and how we laid it out right everybody's invited bring your genius to the table and right. I think that will open up a floodgate of wow amazing new hip-hop music yeah, and we get to see a whole bunch of, you know, new and amazing different talent, you know. Absolutely, so, because it makes yeah. a full culture. It's not That's just right. music, it's DJing, it's art, you right. know what I'm saying? It's dance, you know yep. what I'm saying? And the, the biggest one is knowledge, which is the fifth element of hip hop. So okay. now we have a platform where we can celebrate individuals and organizations that are doing amazing things right. all around the world that we don't hear anything about. We hear about all the negative stuff, all the crazy stuff, all the demeaning stuff and yep. some good stuff. But now we can really put these people on stage, give them their flowers before the world because we need to inspire people to, to do great things. And I think the World Hip Hop Award is going to be a platform to inspire people. Oh, yeah. That to create great, you know, art. Right, right. Yeah. Where is where is it going to be taking place? Um, and this is going to be for the year of 2024? Absolutely. Well, like I said, we've been okay. working on it for years, you know, trying to get support for it. You know what I'm saying? So and we were in the industry trying to get a lot of support and we did get some support, but not as much support we need to really get this thing going. Right. So we decided to really take it now to the people. Okay. Uh, take it to, so we're getting ready to launch our big campaign directly to the people. We're talking to some internet influencers, TikTok influencers that's going to start marketing the World Hip Hop Awards and bring it directly to the people. Right. Uh, we, we wanted to tentatively do it at the Barclay Center in New York. They've okay. been absolutely wonderful to us, trying to help us, you know, and, and guide me and trying to obtain funding and the right production team to do right. it. We were fortunate to get amazing production teams interested in doing the world hip-hop awards uh one right. even uh that used to produce has produced the mtv awards for the past eight years okay oh so wow we, yeah so we're doing really really good in that area but we, we like the barclay center we was actually offered uh to do it in china three years ago oh really well what um, happened what happened I, I turned it down i really felt that it had to be done in new york first yeah because the world hip-hop award is going to travel it's right. Going to be first traveling. So we're going right. to do it first in New York. Right. Maybe next year in Europe or, or Africa or yeah. Dubai and stream it live from all these different locations. Right. So we really want to do it first in New York, but yeah. we're getting to the point where I'm starting to open up my mind a little bit more to other locations if, if we don't get a chance to do it. If, I, if they don't bite fast. Right. Right. <laughs> We're right. going to definitely take the other offers. Some, I, I'm not thinking about China, but we have another country that is also interested. In oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. You must have a, a, a host of people that's working with you to help you put this whole thing together. I, may, I can imagine this is not an easy <laughs> thing to put together. Yeah, pretty so, much. We're pretty much by Zoom and everybody's from home. And we're right. working, we've are we been working on it. Like I said, I'm going on. This is the fifth year. Wow. Yeah, trying to get the funding. And we we spoke to a lot of people. We don't want to change our branding. Right. We right. want to keep it exactly the way that we really want it to be. We want it to be about real hip hop, real culture. Uh -huh. um, we want to highlight artists that are doing amazing music. 
you right. know, their way, you okay. know, unrestrained and, and, and invite all in. I mean, I want to hear what hip hop sounds like from a kid that listens to Mozart. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or a middle-aged young man who listens to Mozart and can play four, you know, instruments and read music. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want to hear hip hop from someone my age. Right, right. All day and taking care of their kids and, and tell me how life is and could be, you know, from a, because I love right. hip hop. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I, I, I'm well into my 50s. I don't want to hear about what's going on in a 12 year old, 13 or 14 year old's life. Right, right, right. Old life. Right. You know I, mean? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I, want, I want to hear what's going on in my life. Right. right. <laughs> I, I know want, that's I want, right. I want Method Man to do it and, and Red Man to do an album. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, because those, you know, and it's good to hear that we can hear a lot of the old original, the artists that from back in, you know, like a yes. Red Man, Method Man and you know, um, I, I love hip hop. I grew up on yeah. hip hop and, you know, and I, I still listen to some of the old school hip hop. And that's, and that's what we all do. Why, yeah. Why I, are we subject to, all, because, you know, I, when you think about it, girl, that's an, an entire market that's oh, yeah. untapped. Yeah. And that's the thing about when I talk to uh, brands and sponsors, uh -huh. I, the, the light bulb goes off on the top of the head. But I said, right. let me explain to you. Right. I said, the World Hip Hop Award is going to reach out to the most sought after demographics of all brands and introduce you guys to a brand, I mean, to a, a, a market that right. is starving for real hip hop. Exactly. And we got exactly. money. Right, <laughs> right. That's right. That's and we right. got money. Yep. So you are missing out, you know, keeping yourself in that little box. There. Right, right. You're missing out. Because right. I, I want to hear hip hop from a 60 year old man talking about the right. problems he had with his wife and kids. Right. <laughs> and right. What's going on in his community. You right. I mean? Right. I'm not glorifying drugs and stuff, but warning the kids, hey, this is not what you want to do. Right. Exactly. And we need that. We need that type of not, stuff, right? look you what's know? happening because we don't. Right, exactly. It's getting crazy now. The way um some of the music that I'm I, you hear now, you know, I'm like me. I'm just tired of hearing the same old type of lyrics. I'm tired of hearing about the violence. You know what I mean? That's the thing I'm really tired of hearing about because you know we we see violence in our community constantly. Who wants to hear about it in the music all the time? I mean, it might be the reality of some mm -hmm. of these artists, but mm -hmm. like you said, there's a diverse. Uh, there's a diversity when it comes to hip hop, you know. Absolutely. There's other things, um, you know, that are happening are, in our community. Exactly. Right, it's not just violence. That's not at all. Not a, not in the least bit. You have. Right. I'm in Atlanta. I just been, just moved to Atlanta a couple of years ago. Atlanta is filled with amazing, beautiful black people that have beautiful homes and yes. driving wonderful cars, got great jobs, and yep. and and opening amazing businesses. But yes. when you think of Atlanta. All you're thinking about is the rappers that are shooting each other mm -hmm. and the violence in the music. You yeah. got amazing artists down here. T.I. T.I.'s son is, I just heard him the other day, is oh, amazing. I can't think of his name. Please forgive me. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I can't think of his name either, but he's yeah, very he's talented. doing amazing hip hop and he's not talking about a lot of craziness. Right. We also have Waka Flocka, who I love and wish he hurry up and do an album because we haven't heard from him for a while and let's right. have amazing artists down here but the yeah. only thing you hear about is all the negativity so right we're exactly. not hearing that it, it, and we blame the media because, because that's, yeah it, that's, and, and exactly and as yeah. long as we have someone to blame for our situation guess what you mm -hmm. don't do anything about it you that's just true sit around and you just blame yeah to us to, to put that out what kind of music we have and if we sit that's back right. and let somebody else decide what kind of music we are allowed to have mm -hmm. it that's, is what it is it is that's right we got to can take control of that and we got to put that out we got to put that out there ourselves like you said exactly exactly you know we can't yeah. depend on the media because we know how the media could be you know, especially when it comes to black logo. folks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right? see, like I said, I'm dragging my logo up this hill. Right, <laughs> <laughs> I've been dragging it out. Right, years. Right, like, hey, right. You guys yeah. said you want real hip hop. Here it is. Right, and it's exactly. ours. That's it's right. Boo boo for us, by us. Come That's on, that's right. 
that's right. When did you get into hip hop? When did you actually, what was the beginning for you when it came down to getting involved into the music, the hip hop industry? Well, I, as I said, I started years ago. Um, I started actually as a singer. I was a pop singer and a funk singer with my ex-husband. Okay. And hip hop was just coming in. Like I said, I started the very beginning. I ain't gonna tell y'all my age, but you got gotta guess the more I talk. Right. <laughs> Because <laughs> you know, thank God, you know, right? <laughs> thank the universe. Right. But, but so the I started very, very early as a singer, and by the okay. time I said I was about maybe 25, 26, okay, um, hip hop was really starting to make its 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 noise. Right. And I'm telling my ex husband, "Hey, we should do hip hop." Right. Of course, around that time, everybody kept saying, "Oh, it's going to be a fad. It's going to be a fad," and I'm like. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. Right. <laughs> this sounds right. Right. <laughs> yeah. But my, yeah. like I said, my ex-husband was not with it. So uh -huh. when we separated and I found myself um, with my two young boys, I had a young, uh, my son, and then we had adopted a little boy from Hale House and uh, an orphanage in New York. Okay. And uh, when I found myself with my two little boys, I decided, well, you know, I want to be more a mother than I wanted to be a singer. Right. So I said, well, I'm going to put down my artistry and just try to figure out what it is that I want to do in music. And then I realized, OK, I'll get into the business side. Right. And I actually got very, very lucky. I was invited to a, a, um, a video shoot. It was okay. a young artist by the name YZ. And this was around the time that the record companies were starting to give a lot of young artists he sounds production deals. He sounds familiar. I think and I had a song YZ. called Turn of the Holy One. Yeah, I think I did an interview with him years yeah, ago yeah. with um through double exposure, Angela Ellaby. I worked for Angelo too, girl. I got a story, I got some stories for you. What? <laughs> it's a <laughs> small <laughs> world. But let me tell you, like I said, I've been, I have been everywhere. I told okay. Mary J. Blige uh interviewing class. Wow, wow. Really? Biggie Smalls was managed in my home. Me and Mark Pitts, who's now, I think he's president of RCA Records now. Mark don't Pitts. Me, Mark, don't get mad at me. But Mark Pitts, um, he's president of one of these labels. We started his company, By Storm Entertainment, in my living room. Our wow. artist was Notorious B.I.G., Faith Evans, and Changing Faces. So these, so you were there at the beginning of their careers. Dream beginning. Wow. Now the, uh, were, the whole thing. Were yeah. you were you managing them at the time, or were uh, they at that time? Yeah, me and Mark Pitts was managing Biggie, Changing Faces, and Faith Evans. Okay. So, wow. so bring me back to what I was saying about me first getting in. So I was okay. in, I was introduced to YZ at that mm -hmm. video shoot, and okay. he told me he had just gotten some funds from uh, Manny and Abe who mm -hmm. had a record shop in Times Square, which was very famous at that time. All mm -hmm. the DJs used to go there and get their vinyl from Manny and Abe. Okay. And they, they wanted to get into the, this is when everybody was trying to get a piece of hip hop. When they realized, hey, these kids got something. Mm -hmm. Well, wow, we were completely on our own. Right. And they realized the record companies and people that were in the industry, wait a minute, these kids got something. Mm -hmm. So they started feeding money into it. Mm -hmm. So they started giving artists what they call production deals. Okay. They didn't want us in their in their offices. Right. So right. Was they gave us money to to, play, to start our own. Okay. Yeah. So those were the production deals. Mm -hmm. So and he had this money, and he was telling me, "I got this company I'm starting, and this then." And I'm looking at this kid like, "Who would give this kid money to start?" Right. Company? So then he had he invited me down, and I came to his office. He had an office in uh, I think like around the 13th Avenue, so down in the village. Okay. And we were right downstairs from Source Magazine. Mm, wow. You know, they were right upstairs, and um, um, Dave Mays was right above us. Okay. So we were right in the building with everybody. And sure enough, they had actually gave this kid money to start this company. They rented an office for him and he was an artist. That's all he was. Mm -hmm. And they just wanted him to attract other artists okay. to sign them to them. Oh, okay. You see, yeah. They gave him money to start the company. They owned the company with him. Right. <laughs> right. And to get him to sign other artists. Okay. Right. So, Underneath uh, their label. Underneath yeah, exactly, the major label, exactly. I guess. Exactly. He yeah. was just the face of it. Yeah. Right, right. It's the face. I used to call it like a, like, you know, yeah. you put on the end of a hook and you throw it out uh -huh. there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I remember them days. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. that's how I actually got in. And I actually came in, met him. And next thing I know, and, and he didn't know a lot about business and all that stuff. And I was, you know, corporate trained at work in offices in Manhattan. And little did most people know that I was about 10, 15 years older than everybody. 
mm. that looks young right age you know right well you know and, black and crack, so. right and i looked so young so i never no one knew how, but i was actually 10 years older than everyone right so i was able to come in and set up the office know how to do paperwork faxes machine i knew how to, i was running the office so that's how i got in i got okay. in running offices and i've ran a few production companies along the way wow wow yeah, wow amazing. Yeah, that's how I got in. Absolutely. Wow, and you've been doing I, it ever since. Ever since, and I worked for um, worked for him for a while, and then I went from him. Then uh, I met Main Source. Okay. Uh, uh, Main Source uh, actually took me from them, had me working in as part of their management team. Mm -hmm. And then there, I was fortunate to meet their lawyer, who was Stuart Levy, who is now I think a big partner in a major uh, music uh, uh, law firm right now. Me okay. and Stuart was so cool that he taught me how to read and write contracts, mm, wow, legal documents. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so wow. that ended up being a feather in my hat. So I was able to always be hired to work for these guys because right. I understood marketing. I understood how to set up an office. I can write documents. I can read contracts coming to them from uh, the record companies. Well, well, you and I can read it and sit them down and highlight everything and tell them exactly what it was and what right. it really said. You know? Right. Right, because so you know, artists ain't they ain't gonna look at the contracts any, you know, the they were, they were all kids, a lot of them yeah, weren't yeah. educated, a lot of them right. were even high school graduates, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, at all, you know what I'm right. saying? So they were just amazing, talented people, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, just naturally gifted. But in terms right. of that corporate, that business structure, they lacked a little bit in that area, and I was fortunate that that's what that's more, that's all I had, right? Right, <laughs> you know right, right. So right. It was a good yeah. trade off, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, you was the most important part of the the pie, you know. And let me tell you, girl, um, that's one thing that disturbs me right now about hip hop. Mm -hmm. When they talk about females in hip hop, and God knows they deserve their flowers, definitely the artists, mm -hmm. the female artists that blaze in this game. They talk mm -hmm. about them, and they absolutely should. And I pay I pay good homage to them, and hope to be able to do so in, on my platform. Right. But there's another group of women that they're leaving out viciously <laughs> wow and back in those days in those offices 99.9 percent .9 of in those offices running was black was women yeah mm -hmm. and a lot of us were working sun up to sun down and a lot of us weren't even being paid mm -hmm. we did yeah. it because we loved the culture we loved our men we saw right. what we were creating and that's how this trillion dollar worldwide industry was built without a dime Right off, off from off the women. Okay, I'm gonna tell because you. we loved and cared and traded and mm -hmm. worked and did. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. that's how we did it. Right, right. And it was black women in the back. In the, like, so we know the names of the Diddies and then and when we should, you know, and the, the Jay Zs uh, because the Jay Zs I, and yeah. the DJ Callens and yeah. but they don't know the Tanya Paytons or the who who was in the back of all that. They don't know Peaches. You right. know, who was the first uh, young lady who managed Mob Deep before right. Chris Lighty. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They don't know, um, uh, what is my, my girl, uh, Tony, Tony Green. One right. One of the biggest, one of the baddest PR agents, you know, in hip hop. And right. then there was Angelo Ellaby. Right. I yeah. worked for Angelo Ellaby. Yeah. He's been around for a long for a time. a very long time. It's yeah. Been, uh, for a very, very long time. I worked yeah. for Angelo. Ange I learned a lot. Right. And working for Angelo. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I, um, uh, I used to go to New York all the time to interview a lot of his clients mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. for a local television show in, in Trenton, New Jersey for, um, and it was through our, um, double exposure mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. to where I was able to get those, to get those interviews with all the different artists in the industry and stuff like that. But yeah, Angelo, oh, he, he, he does was, it he hours too. Let me tell you, um, he was one of the greats. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm telling you, Angelo, he taught me how to write a press release. Mm. And, and and to this day, uh, I follow that protocol and have fed my family off a right. lot of things that I learned for Angelo. Angelo right. brought me into his office one day. And at that time, it was very hard to even get artists on television. There was hip hop artists were not on television. Right. I think they got on TV maybe once. I'm not sure if it was before Arsenio not, put them on or not. But right. I remember Angelo bringing me into his office and telling me, OK, Tandy, I need you to figure out a way that hip hop artists can get on television. Right. I'm like, 
they don't they don't get on TV yet. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's like he looked at me and answer was tough. And that right. was tough. And that and I, I always to this day appreciated that. Yeah. Um, you know yeah. what I'm saying? He was tough. And he says, he says, well, that's what you need to learn how to do. Right. I right. remember going you back sound to just like him. Like, yeah, with my tail between my leg, like, this man is crazy. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus Lord. What is... Okay. All right. And I, but I, you know, so right. I just, just, just I, could, I didn't know what to do. I think right. maybe a month later, uh -huh. the universe blessed me, girl. Wow. I got a call from a young lady that worked at a uh, uh talk show okay i think it, the charles perez show charles okay. a brand new talk show to try to run up against the montel williams show right and she <laughs> said to me you know i was calling to see if you guys have any guests you know that we can put on the show so i'm saying to myself oh this is an opportunity <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so I'm telling I said, yeah, I have some people that we can, I can help you. I can book your show for you. I most definitely could do that for you. Right. And, um, she says, well, you know, how much would you charge? I said, no, I wouldn't charge you anything, but. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> said, there is a but. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, how about we do this? I said, I'll give you, you know, R&B artists and hook you up with anybody that, you know, that you want to get in contact with. I said, but I need a way to get hip hop artists on television. Mm -hmm. And she's like, she went totally silent. What do you mean? I said, I said, let's do this. I right. said, I know every now and then you guys have unruly teens on the show. Right. You know, where teens are acting up, smoking drugs, having sex. I said, let me bring a hip hop artist on. Now I have to perform. Right. Just on as a mentor, talking to the kids, telling them not to do that. Mm -hmm. And she took it. She wow. said, I put several artists on the Charles Perez show. I did a couple on the Montel Williams show, uh -huh. uh, even the Geraldo show. And then Ricky Lake came out. Oh. And Ricky Lake turned around. She was doing a regular show. She turned around and revamped her whole show. All right. I know she had hip hop artists performing on her show. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you opened up, opened up the doors. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Mm. Can you copyright or almost maybe your idea? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was happy to see that they were able to get a platform to get on. But yeah, she revamped. Her, she took that idea and she, and she ran with that. Her, her whole show was surrounded around. <laughs> they she didn't only come on. They were right. performing and everything. Wow. <laughs> She, she ran with that. She Don't saw the, always. I, yeah, she saw the opportunity. I guess she she saw what you met my mad at her. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Wow. That's so amazing. Angie, Angelo actually invited. I mean, introduced me to Biggie. Right. We got and to show you how oblivious I was sometimes to, to where the universe was. Placed. And this was before he got with Diddy. No, this is he was with Diddy. Oh, he, he was signed with Diddy. Diddy. Okay. His first album had just about. Was, let me, when I first worked with Angelo, I'm not sure if the album was out yet. Okay. Uh, if it is, it was. It might have been just out. You know what okay. I'm saying? Because I, I didn't know a lot about Biggie at that time. Right. right. And um, next thing I know, I get called in Angelo's office again. <laughs> and he goes, all right, Tandy, I want you to work on this party with um, this my, I, my new client, Mark Pitts. Uh-huh. I didn't know who Mark Pitts was. Like I said, right. I was the kind of person that was tunnel vision. Right. I would get in there and go to work, do my work, and basically work from 10 to 10 and go home and take care of my kids. Right, right. You know, I was that person, you know, uh -huh. and just tunnel vision. Right. And, um, just dip, and, I, and I wasn't into the, what was around me in terms of, none of us really were. You right. Know? So we were almost oblivious to what we were actually creating and right. the things that we were doing. Mm -hmm. We were just being ourselves. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And sometimes as people, we don't see how amazing that is. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So Until true. later on, we step back and like, we sit back. Oh, yep. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. We really did that. Yep. So he called me Mark Pitts. I'm introduced to Mark Pitts. I had no idea who he was mm -hmm. at the time that day. And me and him were supposed to work on the party. I think it was four days before I realized I was producing and helping Mark Pitts blow Biggie Small, rather uh, throw Biggie Small's platinum party. Wow. Wow. So the movie, wow. in the movie, when you see him on stage with the, the crown on his head, yeah. uh -huh. I, threw, I threw that party with Mark Pitts. 
Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, really it's a small that's... platinum party for his album. Wow. Isn't that something? It was oh. amazing, that party. It was amazing. Everybody was there. Everybody wow. Did wow. Everybody was there. So when I see old video, I'm running around working like a crazy woman. So I didn't right. even see. But I have to look back. And then when I see the videos, go like, yeah, that was the party. But I was working like a crazy woman. Right, right, right. right. It, it was it's something amazing. And, and it was, uh, like I said, I owe Angelo a lot. Yeah, he's an amazing uh, person. Now that's great. a person who really he needs his flowers too. I mean, this man, uh uh actually he was supposed to come to the uh the Black Fairy Godmother um mm -hmm. foundation. They had last year, every year she has uh, uh um the purple diamond awards. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to give Angelo his flowers then, but he wasn't able, able to make it. Yeah, so yeah. hopefully, hopefully they can do it this year, you know. Um, but yeah, he's a he's an amazing person. I, I definitely thank you for yeah. reminding me of that because sometimes you forget um, yeah. the people along the way. And you know, we did we didn't part on good terms, you know. After actually, actually, after the party, the party right. was such a huge success, you know. He mm -hmm. actually promoted me and made me the uh PR agent for his agency. Wow. Before I left. Absolutely. And like I said, we didn't we didn't part on good terms, but that's just how life is. Yeah. But always yeah. have love for Angelo, always spoke highly of him. Yeah. You know, when we talked about my career and what I've been, I always accredit a lot to Angelo. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. He gave me major, major opportunities and I ran with it and built a career for, because of it. And because of that, I can do the World Hip Hop Awards. Wow. Wow. That's so amazing. I definitely need to sit down and think about how I can give him his flowers. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, you. And I need to find out how I can be a part of this uh this year's 2024 hip hop awards. Hey, this is hip hop. I, I mean, I'm old school. I want to be a, a, be a I, I, I want to <laughs> interview somebody or be Absolutely. on the red carpet or something. Absolutely, you can be a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> and we want you to be a part of it. We've been, and that's how we built it. There yeah. was no, everybody can bring something to the table. That's how you make a nice family dinner. Right. You know? That's right. As long as that's you understand right. the rules, the regulation, the protocol, the brand, you bring something to the table. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, like I said, it's FUBU. It's for us, by us. We right. want um, our hip hop enthusiasts from all over the world to nominate who they would like to see on the right. World Hip Hop Awards, who they would like to perform on the World Hip Hop Awards. Right. And, um, and then take those names and bring it to our panel. And that's how we'll decide who will get the awards. Now, we're right. not going to give out a, a whole ton of uh, awards. Right, Every right. Every year, the World Hip Hop Awards is going to be a celebration of music, culture, and people around the world doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. And in between that, we're going to give folks some flowers. That's you're right. Not, you're not gonna have, I mean, if you name the best right. in the world, there's nowhere to go. That's that's <laughs> true. That's true. You know? That is so, so we want true. This to be the most coveted award in music and the most coveted award in hip hop. Right. And a true acknowledgement of hip hop excellence. That's right. That's right. This is oh, I'm looking forward to this. I'm excited already. Any <laughs> <laughs> me too, girl. I get up every morning. World hip hop, world, world hip, -hop. hip hop awards, yeah. <laughs> and that's amazing. You're gonna have you're gonna have Dave Chappelle oh, and Queen Latte. Dave Chappelle, your so mouth funny. to God's oh my ears, girl. He is hilarious. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I'm trying to get so close to him. You know, of course, I've talked to his agent, who's been extremely wonderful to us. Okay. Um, but we got to get that sponsor, you know, yeah. to put that yeah. bill for us. And I think that we have a platform that will be attractive to any sponsor that really wants to do something. Right. You know, I mean, what? other event can give you a worldwide exposure using amazing artists for the right. cost of partnering with a large local you know business or local event no that's one right. that's you know true. we wanted to be a part of the um 50th anniversary in new york right we didn't get to be a part of that you know and oh, i'm like wow. excuse me uh excuse me we right. can make it a worldwide celebration right right yeah yeah that would have been that would have been i guess I, my invite might be lost in the mail i mean you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> who knows 
ain't mad at you. Too yeah. far, I ain't mad at you. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been dope. Did they do anything for the 50th this year? I didn't see too many. And, and see, and, and, now, you heard what you just said. Yeah. They're doing concerts. And, and one thing I must say, I'm glad to see some of the concerts that they're doing. Right. You right. see some artists that we haven't seen in a long, long, long right. time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But concerts they're doing yeah. concerts and i appreciate that and i'm happy to see that but right. we wanted to use the world hip-hop awards as that would have been one for change that would have been platform dope. for a conversation about the culture a right. platform to see if we can do something differently we That's wanted right. to celebrate and we wanted to party and we wanted to you know do all those things that should right. be done but we wanted to be the voice of change we wanted right. to go that because this is an opportunity for that Mm -hmm. You know, when you have all eyes on hip hop now. So let's right. let's talk about some real issues. Let's talk about some real things. Right. We, we see what's going on, you know, and then and then you got New York, this uh Eric Adams, the mayor, uh, honorable Eric Adams, um who the first hip hop her, mayor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh we, we still waiting for our love, Mr. Hip Hop Man. <laughs> right. <laughs> We still looking for a little respect for a lady over here, you know. Right, but right. I don't know what 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 is it? They don't want women to do it. I don't know. I, you know what? I don't know I, what they're they intimidated by us women. I don't know. And they should be. <laughs> and, and, and they should be because let me they tell you, I'm by mad. I, I, they should be because I'm mad. I right. I I look at what's going on um in the culture and what's going on with our children. Right. And um, I'm not just talking about it, you know, or tweeting about it i'm busting my behind to do something about it um right. i watched biggie tupac get shot um jam master j god thank us we didn't have that many right right in my yeah. day i right. watched us go through the trauma of mm -hmm. watching um our uh, people that we looked up to analyze love right murdered and slaughtered like they had no worth whatsoever and yeah. here i am 25 years later watching my children go through this i know it's we terrible be it's sad it's too many hip-hop artists lives being taken right now it's it, it's, it's just getting out of hand it is, you know it, and i'm ashamed of it i'm yeah. ashamed every day and 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 i think that's probably why i work so hard on this this, this yeah. show and push and push and all the doors now I'm like, okay, well, yeah. I'll go to this door. Oh, that right. one closed, I go to that one. I go to this one. And I'm not going to stop. That's right. I'm ashamed of what I was there from the beginning. Right. I know what we built. I know what we tried to do. I, I and I know that there are people who feel exactly the way I do. Mm -hmm. so exactly. That's why we, we're revamping. And now we're just gonna take the in the, take the award show, take our message to the people. That's right. And show you guys what it is that we're doing and why we want to do it. And right. then we'll get it done. That's we right. We have to. I am I cannot just what just the other day another rapper got killed. I know. I know. I, and, I, and a few I, days before that, another one. Yeah. It's terrible. It's like like you said, back in the day, there wasn't a lot of artists outside of Tupac and Biggie. Um, right. you know, you didn't see a lot of rap artists getting killed shot exactly. and murdered, you right. know we can count them on our hands you know what I'm yeah saying? And yeah but now you, you i mean i i we started the consortium of hip-hop which yeah. is a non-profit that actually owns the world hip-hop awards and the world hip-hop awards will fund the non-profit and okay. what our non-profit aims to do is to be a place where artists can apply for funding Mm -hmm. so that if you want to be an independent artist, all you have to do is submit your music or your art or your clothing line or whatever it is that you are doing, whatever your intellectual property is, to our board for funding. Right. So that way you can do what kind of art you want to do. We have to enter. Yeah. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason in the world why everyone cannot be an entrepreneur. Right. And tons of money. You got the world to sell your stuff to. Right. Exactly. And right now, being that everything is technology and everything is online, everybody should be able to, you know, make. And that's the thing. It's just the lack of funding for a lot of these. The lack of funding and really yeah. understanding that you have the world. Right. What you want to do. Uh, yeah. and, and you don't have to, you don't have to stay in that box. You know what I'm right. saying? You don't have to decide that the only thing I have to do uh, to do my music is to get a record deal and mm -hmm. follow the protocols mean, you know, to get that record deal. Right. Now, you can go get funding. 
you know, yes, and put out you your own music. Yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Funding, legal mm-hmm. help, marketing help, because mm-hmm. we're going to invest in you. Right. You right. Know? So we're going to invest yeah. in you so that mm-hmm. way you can do what you want to do. That we right. want you to be able to get a uh, health care. Right. You know, insurance. You know, maybe you want to buy it, start a business. Right. Yeah. It has to be funding. The World Hip Hop right. Award is going to make a lot of money. Yeah. So then I sat down and I said to myself, what you going to do with it? I don't, I don't, you can't sleep in but one house at a time. Right. You drive yeah. one car. And I'm, I don't like designer shoes that much. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, you're right though, but we need you to, we gotta invest, yeah, we have to, we have to invest, we have to invest in ourselves, you know, Absolutely. like, these, you know, because we can't depend on these major uh, labels and things like that. And now uh, I had DJ Cool, uh, the one that, that song that you hear on the radio, Let Me Clear My Throat. Yes. yes. Oh, he was icon. on. Yeah, oh, he, I would love for him to be a part of our event as well. Absolutely. Yeah, he was on the podcast. Um, I had him on the podcast, and he was talking about this 360 deal that they that they offering oh. these artists now, where they just basically taking money from them for everything, you know, even yeah, it, the uh even their performance money. And I was absolutely yeah, because back in the days when you signed a record deal, the record company only took money from your records. Right, right. When they bought in the the, the uh 360 deals, that means that they get music, they get money rather from everything, everything. They do all the way around. Right. And and, and it, it's so horrible it's almost crazy that it's legal but the yeah. only reason that is legal because it's being done to us mostly right and they're right. being done to young blacks you know right um and and in any other business the attorney general or some a group of lawyers would have got together and said no you can't do this to our children right so now the millions yeah. of lawyers we got in this country would let us let them do it to us right so right 360 you come in you get a record deal so if you get a, a clothing line if you get a television show if you get um any kind of endorsement anything you they do, get a percentage of anything you do that's terrible, you know, because like you said, back in the day, it was only the music, the records they got a percentage of, not the, not the the performance and all this other stuff. That's crazy. That's something they just made up. I guess they, you know, that's ridiculous. Yeah, you, you, like what they say, you get somebody inch, they take a yard. So that's yep. basically the yard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, they, that has been taken in terms of the music business. Yeah. It, 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 so because you look at amazing artists that uh just are not performing anymore but they're doing something else right right you know what i'm saying they're doing something else letting people other people get ahead of them when you know that they are far better right they're meant they're kept here right away from it you know yeah yeah it's a, a further horrific control Mm-hmm. Uh, of how much money they will be able to make. Right. And to show you how that gets down, back in the days, like I said, when we were running hip hop, there had to be, girl, maybe a hundred different marketing companies, all black owned, because yep. we had to do our own PR, mm-hmm. our own marketing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Book our own artists. Because remember, they, they, weren't, it, they weren't touching us for a while. It, we were like, right. they were that's garbage. These, these kids are just doing some crazy. But then when they right. started seeing what we were doing with it, the messages that Chaos One was coming out, the kind of groups that were coming out, Dead Prez, you right. know, Public Enemy, you know, right. you know, all this stuff that was coming out and making money, that's when we got their attention. Right, the right. Point, we, had, we were booking our own artists. I said, book artists in between work. Right. So yeah. When, whenever my kid, I'm the, I probably the, the, uh, the founder of working from home because I was working from home after I left Angelo. I started working from home. Mark Pitts hired me. Right. And that's how I left Angelo from the party. Right. Okay. And then Mark Pitts hired me to work for him because at the time he didn't have an office and we put the office in my living room. Right. Right. So I yeah. started working from home there. So yeah. I, in between working for Mark, I was booking shows under my own company name. Mm-hmm. You know, and everybody right. was doing it. So we had about a, I'm telling you, hip hop was about to make every black person in this country a millionaire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got that damn close. Wow. Yeah. Because we had our own marketing companies. There was a million different clothing lines. Fubu and mm-hmm. wasn't the only ones. Yeah. There were tons of clothing lines. Yeah. Um, I remember this brother had, had designed uh, a very unique men boxers. Uh huh. And I see them now in, 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 in Bloomingdale's. That mm. brother designed Dale's back then because I remember we were putting them on our artists. Right, right. And I yeah. see them have like a 
huh. And that brother designed those back. In, in, so many things I see yeah. that we started in hip hop. What they yep. call, um, uh, uh, what they call marketing. They call mar guerrilla marketing and all that stuff here. We yeah. were doing that back then. Do it back in the end. We started back then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All these companies, all these different um, uh, companies that we were all running ourselves, mm -hmm. and we got taken out of the booking by all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, CSA, William Morris started telling the artists, uh, if you come out, they'll run, send their representatives over there, and mm -hmm. um, we'll give you an advance if you sign with us exclusively. Mm. Wow. So we couldn't afford to give artists $10,000. Right. So then Amen. one by one, we were unable to book our own artists. Right. Yeah. Well, they, you know, they, a lot of them, they wasn't used to seeing that kind of money, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we that's how they, that's how that. they got, that's how they got taken advantage of. Exactly. And, and, and I'm glad you said that because once yeah. they signed, now we know the relationships between the businesses, right? So mm -hmm. once they signed, if there was an issue at the record label or issue of anybody wanting to do anything or shut you down or close you, they just stopped you from getting shows. Because mm -hmm. you don't sign an exclusive contract. Right. Yeah. So you can't even book with nobody else. No. Nope. That's so how we, they had it locked in in the contract. Yeah. Exactly. And we saw a lot of artists yep. slowly yeah. taking out the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took advantage of a lot of um artists back then, you know, signing them to because they know the a lot of the artists don't know the business of music. They just want to perform and present their talent. Mm -hmm. But as far as like you you put twenty five thousand dollars in front of somebody's face who've never seen that kind of money before, they're gonna go after that twenty five thousand dollars, knowing not even knowing that they worth way more than that. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and that's how they, that's how, like you said, they reel them in and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. And, and that's exactly what Biggie's mother said about yeah. Diddy. She said, you know, he bought loyalty for just $25,000 for my son. Mm, yeah. You know, he, he bought loyalty. And right. then he says, you, 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 bought, you should buy, never sell loyalty to, to a certain extent. Yeah, right. to a certain extent. Right. You know, business. But you right. know, just be sure that you understand what you're getting into. That's and, right. and I fear that right. back in those days when the, the adults, when we were doing hip hop, when we were working in hip hop, and they didn't see what we were doing, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. It, was our, it was our own people, you yeah. know, uh, hollering, oh, it's just a fad. Could you right. imagine if, if NAACP and all these other all black organizations had a did what they were doing to us to get a piece of hip hop? Exactly. How independent they would be right now yep. to actually make a difference in our community. That's you true. Know, you yeah. know, imagine if some of, the, of these politicians came into hip hop and got in with us and and bought their money and their and their business and their understanding to us at that time. Right. How independent. We would have built Black Wall Street again. Tell me about it. But they didn't see yep. it that way. They saw it all as just you know these kids don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I fear that that's the same thing happening with the World Hip Hop Awards. Right. Yeah. They they're not. Everybody is seeing the value except us. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. And I'm like, I'm screaming like, right. hey, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got the hip hop Grammys over here. We got the first global hip hop. Right. And those that do see it is like, and then we got all these major artists out here that's making all these millions and billions of dollars. You got billionaires in hip hop. They should be out here protesting for this big this 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 thing you know what i'm saying i mean with all the money they and they should be should be sort and that's the problem with us black folks we don't support each other like we should well i think i think you know that's, that's definitely true it's a different mindset because yeah. back in those days um we have we just did it because we just loved each other we worked together right. and we made it happen mm -hmm. but then i remember about maybe 25 years ago when i saw the influx of this money worshiping coming into our community mm -hmm. and i remember saying to people i said this this is not a good thing and right like, yo you know black folks need to get their money get their money yeah get mm -hmm. your money but keep it in perspective right keep it you know you can't become what you say you hate right you know what i'm saying that's you true don't, you know what i'm saying if you don't watch out you will become what you hate that's and right what you, what you fight against you know mm -hmm. so what has happened in our community with this worship of money mm -hmm. is that no one wants to do anything without being paid mm -hmm. and when you have all the money 
that's you, you could do that. You right. know what I'm saying? Because they don't realize the other people are not doing that. They're still doing stuff with each other without right. a dime. Right. But they're telling you <laughs> that right. you shouldn't be doing anything without getting paid because mm -hmm. that shuts us down. Right. Right. You understand exactly. what I'm saying? Right. That shuts yeah. us down. Because yep. now I go to my people because I mean, we got, we are the culture. Right. So I can't That's go right. to, I should be able to go to so and so and so and so and say, hey, look at what I'm doing. Will you guys just give me some love? You know, right. It don't have to be about love. money. All, yeah. Right. But, now you it, it, it most most they want to be paid. Mm -hmm. Back in the days, Tupac was wearing uh, this, uh cross colors and fubu and wouldn't even charge. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's mm -hmm. how people was getting down back then. Would he right. blew them up? Yeah. And I remember when um I think um Wilson did the interview and he said he asked Tupac why why you he says you black why would I that was the mentality back then. Right, right. I was writing for like about four magazines. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was doing interviews like this, you know, right. and no one even asked. For right. Money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't understand. That's the way to get. That's how you get started in the game. Anyway, it's exposure how, and, and, and then, and, as well as supporting one another to build exactly, something bigger. Because exactly. You see something bigger. You see the bigger picture. Yes. You know, and a lot of people. Are exactly. Like you said, and not, that's how they keep control of it, because and, and I mean, I've actually had someone tell me to my face and this is a Caucasian person. Right. Told me you should get a white partner and you'll get all the money you want. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Be, wow. It, 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 because that's true. Right. Because right. It, it, but I, I refuse to play those games. Right. I right. have children that look up to me. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I have children that look up to me. I've been ahead of my household for a long time. Mm. You know, so I have children that look up to me and sons, you know, and daughter. Mm. So I, it, there's, I have to move a certain way. You know, mm -hmm. what I'm and, and I tell them what, what I'm, this, what's going on, but, mm -hmm. but, but no, I, right. I, I'm going to go with the power of, of, of my people and right. make this happen. Right. But you don't That's have to right. play those games, but we'll, well, but it's just going to be harder. It may take longer. Right. I, 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 we strong enough. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, definitely. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We ain't gotta sell our soul. So <laughs> strong enough for we that's just gotta right. do what we all what we know we could do. We can't right. stand and complain because right. back in those days when we talk about well, we used to have Black Wall Street. We uh -huh. had, we had so many successful black towns all over this country with their own schools, their own banks, right. their own everything. Yes, they did horrible things to those people and wiped them out and murdered them, but they did. How can we sit here and not have that? Right. We have the internet. We have money. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's we right. have weapons. We that's have right. everything. So there is no excuse at all. But, it, but that, that's why they keep you just worrying, talking about excuses mm -hmm. and about being a victim. Because as mm -hmm. long as you make blaming and victimizing yourself, mm -hmm. guess what? You don't do anything. Right, exactly. You don't yep. do anything but sit around and complain, well, white supremacy, racism, right. absolutely. We, 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 we got to get out and we got to make things happen for ourselves. We can't be sitting back waiting on it. It's and, our responsibility. It's our absolutely. responsibility, yeah. Absolutely. Cannot it's wait. Our, we know that. Yeah. Yeah. Or to never get done. I mean, because we have to, we can't be sick. We, I mean, those, we can't keep using those things as excuses. You know, we have, we, we, like you said, we got money, you know, exactly. let's we make it happen. Money. We have lawyers, we have right. doctors, we have everything. The only true. thing we have to do is just, just consolidate it. That's right. Like everybody else doing. That's yep. it. But yep. we, we're too easily pulled from the community and saying you're special you mm -hmm. don't want to be with them come with us mm -hmm. and that's cool I want to be with them too I want to be with everybody you know what I'm saying right. but my first responsibility is myself and my family and I'm not even mad at them because their responsibilities to themselves and their, and their family, family. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with self-preservation right right we just need to learn that right that's right <laughs> we need to understand the value of that that's right. And take and pull in our millions, our genius, our lawyers, our doctors, mm -hmm. our engineers, our healers. Yeah. And, and be like, the great people that we are. That's right. And it's a lot of us out here with all of that. I mean, like you said, we got all these athletes, we got all these entertainers, and we got people with so much money 
that they can take, you know, if we all came together and just said, look, let's come together and make this happen because that's how we get our own things done, you know, get our own. And and that's the one thing that's so brilliant and wonderful about hip hop. Hip hop is uh, is for everybody. Right. It's the one energy. Right, mm-hmm. that can actually bring everything around us right now is ripping us apart. They're mm-hmm. dividing to conquer to control mm-hmm. everything. But hip hop is the one energy, the one language that yeah. we all vibrate on. That's right. And that's why it is so important that we concentrate on real hip hop right now. That's true. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We need it more now than ever. It's the Especially only thing now. that can yeah. bring us together. Black, white, Puerto Ricans, Asians, Jews, Gentiles, yep. gays, straight, whatever you into. Right. Because there's something there in it for everybody. And mm-hmm. as long as, you know what I'm saying, it's good, it's positive, it's fun. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. political. You know what I'm saying? It's for everybody. And it's all to a James Brown beat. That's right. <laughs> yep. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We're giving him an award as the uh, most sampled artist in the history of hip hop. Oh yeah, well, yeah. You know that J- hip hop. They all sampled the- a lot of his music. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, hip hop was born on the back of James Brown beat. Yeah, yeah. And yep. we're missing that. There's no soul in hip hop right now. Yeah, that's I mean- why everybody can do it. Yeah, yeah. And anybody can do it. There ain't no soul in. <laughs> so, and the stuff that they picking now, like these artists, they picking now, like on TikTok and all this. I said, this is how they finding artists. They artists yeah. say, but no talent. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Lord, yeah. what kind? I, I just want to grab them all and just hug them and come on, come on, get over here. Yeah, get over here to me. Right. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> get over here. Let me tell you what. Let me let Mama tell you something. <laughs> let me break the whole story down to you. Give you the history of hip hop. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that's the thing. And, and bringing it back to the consortium of hip hop, one in order for these uh, artists to come in and get funding and get, you know, um, legal, how all free, mm-hmm. you know, you have to also learn the history of music. That's right. You're going to learn about jazz. You're going to learn about how to read a little bit of music. You're going to learn about music. How right. are you going to get into music and don't know nothing about music? Right, exactly. You don't understand that music. I think, what is this artist? Brilliant little boy who I never got to meet this little young man, XX mm-hmm. Stexion. And please, I hope I said his name right. Uh, uh, unfortunately, he was murdered as well. Wow. Uh, his name is XXX Extension. I think that's how you say his name, but brilliant, brilliant. Brilliant gift. He had the potential of being the next Tupac. Mm, wow. He was that close. He was there. Yeah. Was there. You wow. Know, um, he did a video where he was telling young kids about music, about mm. frequencies, how he can change the frequency of his music to make you happy, to mm. make you sad, to make you violent. And mm. he was telling the young kids to do, I think it's one of the last videos he made before he was murdered. Wow, and, and, you, and that is what music is, right? When you yeah. think of what the power of music, music mm-hmm. can, as you know, you could be in the worst mood of the day, and right? Just throw on some public enemy or throw on some, yeah, and that change your whole mood, mood. <laughs> yeah, change your home, the whole energy in the house, yeah, it sure you know, does. Change, yep. like, change everything back in the days. Musicians, especially during the Egyptian days, musicians were almost reared as gods. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because they felt you had a direct connection to the gods, right? So you were bringing down this amazing sound, right? You know, yeah, and and yeah. and, and co- compositions, yeah. Nobody could understand. I made out of these weird things you would create, instruments, right? Right, yeah. And, and you can affect everything. They actually believe that the pyramids may have been built by frequency of sound. Because mm. now if they've letting us know it's been written, of course, in the ancient text. Let you know right. I'm, I'm kind of a nerd too. So- right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm a little nerd too sometimes. Okay, I'm a nerd, so I, I read a lot of stuff. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so right. back in the days, you know, they learned, you know, they're letting people know about some of the ancient texts that actually tell you that certain frequencies you can actually move objects, solid mm-hmm. objects, because everything around us is just energy. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all just a frequency mm-hmm. because we're not really these bodies. I'm not really Tandy. You're not really you. You know, not right. really, so we're we're basically spiritual beings having a physical experience. Right. 
Right. So if you understand that, then you know if you put things in a certain frequency, you can actually move objects. Mm -hmm. And they believe that that's how they built the pyramids. They didn't mm -hmm. have to lift those rocks. They right. just played instruments or use or what some technologies that made a certain frequency that levitated those rocks. Right. And you and you can see those experiments on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. can see it on YouTube. Okay, so I got past yeah. my nerves. Yeah. My nerves <laughs> Right. Well, look, this girl's good, What's she talking about? <laughs> and moving rocks and building pyramids. <laughs> but see that, and that that's is the passion that's of it. love and music. Yeah. And, but see, that's it. That's what hip hop is. Hip hop yeah. is everything. It is. It everything is. And more. It is. And it has opened up so many, it fed so many families. It's opened up so many doors for so many people. You know, you see these artists now, they're getting all these brand deals, like you were saying. Absolutely. You know, getting major deals and they taking hip hop took it took it to just a whole different another level. People getting so, liquor deals and you getting have all kinds of making money Absolutely. all kinds and of money. Doing amazing. Look at ice cube. Hip -hop. You yeah. look at ice cube. He done went from yeah. you know adding NWA to direct the movies. movies. Yeah. Now he's got a baseball, a basketball team. Wow, I know that I didn't know. Yes, yeah, he got a basketball team, but wow. uh, NBA is fighting to, to, to hold him down. Wow. <laughs> he did an interview. Yeah. Check out his interview. He just did an interview with Car with Carson Tucker. Uh -huh. Is that right? Yeah, with Car yeah. And uh he, he did an interview telling everybody about it, how they're trying to block him and trying to keep him because he's growing. You know they don't want to see that. No, they don't want <laughs> yeah. But get yeah. ready, you're gonna have to see it. That's right. It's up to That's us right. whether or not he is successful. That's right. We need to support him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, support him because that's then, true. Yes, you, he, we should see a team. Yeah, that would be dope. You know what I mean? Because he would be the first. Because none of us don't. We don't own it. Do we own a basketball team? I don't think so. I, 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 or do Michael Jordan? I think Michael. I'm not really a sneaker chaser, but I Me think maybe some <laughs> some well, of them might own a piece of one, but nothing as oh. big as what Ice Cube is doing. Right? Yeah. You know, because, and, or maybe they not getting the attention that Ice Cube is getting. But I know Ice Cube is. They looking at him as you know the, yeah. the, somebody they got to keep keep down. Right. He, he's doing really well with his team. Oh wow, that's one. I mean, imagine you, they have him having a team where the biggest prospects are not going to NBA, but they want to go over there. Right, right. And having someone like an Ice Cube, trust me, they will want to go over there. Right. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You know, yep. All he had to yeah. do is have that money. Because even remember, yeah. Jay Z tried to do a sports um uh, management company. Right, right. And they were all up in arms. Oh no, he don't have experience. How dare he? Even now he, now he, he got that. Yeah, and look at him. He had. I think he does have a. I think he still has it, but I don't think it. he publicized it. And I don't think he. I don't think I, I haven't heard much about it. Yeah, it was, it was something that was going to be reckoned. You know that we were right. something huge, but I haven't heard much about it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that's what we got to do. We just got to, like you said, we got to support each other. We got to put our money where our mouth is and we got to get out there and mm -hmm. make things happen for ourselves. We can't be sitting around here depending on other people to do things for us because exactly. they're not going to give us what we can give ourselves, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know? Because it, it's only in our best interest. It yourself. is. That's right. You, know, it's only, you can't expect somebody else to do that, especially if they're living and eating off the, the other. You right and, and yeah. you can't be mad at them they're just trying to do their thing it's up to us to yeah. make sure we do ours as well that's true that's you true know? yeah i, I tell people true. i say black is a consciousness not a skin color that's right <laughs> <laughs> you that's right that's right <laughs> that's right consciousness because some of us i don't know i'll be like <laughs> Give me your black card. You don't, you don't know how to use that damn thing. <laughs> you ain't using that card right. Yeah, give me your black card. A few million billionaires. I want to go to give me your black card. You don't right. have to use that shit no more. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? You don't act black no more. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, that black. That no is, that yeah. Black <laughs> then I didn't come to the hood. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you barred for a while. You on part of Right. We canceled you. <laughs> Get in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to this. And uh, Tandy, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this excitement about the World Hip Hop Awards. Um, 
you know, you you doing, girl, you doing it, every, you doing it all. I'm trying, and I had. I'm and, telling you, homage to you too. And I'm and I'm and, and I'm here for you. I mean, I, I, look, it's all about helping each other. You know what I'm saying? And making this thing happen. If you need my help, let me know. You know, and no, girl, I, I need I, your help. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you now. Let me know what you need me to do, and I'm there. You know, I I I, I, I can do my part. You know, I appreciate whatever. It. Yeah, awesome. so uh, I appreciate I, it, and I appreciate you. I thank yeah. you for giving me an opportunity to even tell my story. I appreciate oh, it. And thank, thank you, you so much. So and I never you. knew, I never knew who even started the the uh, the World Hip Hop Awards, and now I know. Mm -hmm. Look at this; she's <laughs> right here in front of me, y'all. <laughs> and I had the opportunity to interview her. <laughs> Absolutely, I want to tell your audience if they want to support the World Hip Hop Awards, just go to www.worldhiphopawards.com. Okay, um, they can find me on Twitter. They can all—I uh, think it's we're at uh, www.a369 on Twitter. Okay, uh, I'm on LinkedIn. You know, I'm not hard to find at all. Let's okay. all support real hop hip hop. Let's That's not right. Talk about it. Let's be about Let's it. Let's be it's about it, y'all. That's is right. Up to us, nobody can do what we do not allow them to do. That's right. And all y'all folks who's gonna be watching this podcast, Diddy, Jay Z, all y'all folks, <laughs> Ricky Rose, all y'all with all that money. I'm calling names out. That's what I'm doing. Well, I'm businesses call... too. Black business. Yeah, we need these businesses the out here. We need I go. Absolutely, we would yeah. love to. Uh, yeah. and, I, and it's one of my dreams with this show. I would love to have black businesses support us. I, 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 of course, I want the Coca Colas and the rest of them. But I right. say to myself all the time, why am I chasing them with all these black businesses? They should be chasing why you. Are you guys not sponsoring right events. Where, mm -hmm. where are you in that? You know, That's and, and I, I mean, why? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know? And exactly. that would change things if they do. Yeah, how many of us? Oh, and we all, and how many of us out here buying all these brands and stuff yeah. like that? How many of us are drinking Coca Cola sodas and stuff? Come on now, yeah. yeah. You know, let's get let's get busy, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, Tandy, thanks again for coming on, and uh, hey, we definitely gonna stay in touch. And absolutely, uh, this was like more like a girlfriend talk. More than oh me. yeah, I appreciate it. It sure was. <laughs> I feel like we known each other for years. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm just meeting you. <laughs> well, thanks again for coming on, and you know, y'all, um, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification button. And we need y'all supporters to come out and support this this event, you know. And uh, Tandy, thanks again for being on. I appreciate You're more you. More than welcome. Girl. Thank you. Yeah, Thank and you me. got my info, and I got yours. So absolutely, I'm twenty four seven. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you take care of yourself. And God bless, lady. You, you take care. Bye -bye. All Thank right. Bye-bye.